Without a doubt, the most important question of our lives is where will we spend eternity? That is, when you die, will you go to heaven or hell? Simply put, if you were to die right now, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? If you can't honestly answer yes to this question, then you need to keep watching. If you can honestly answer yes, make sure you can do so based on the truth of God's word. If you are counting on having been baptized or being a member of a church, then you are not going to heaven but to hell. Romans 3, 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do is good, no, not one. If you are counting on your good works to get you to heaven, then you are not going to heaven but to hell. Romans 5.12 For as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So to be 100% sure that you will go to heaven, stay tuned. Do you think you are a good person? Most people would answer this question yes. This is because they are answering it from man's perspective and not God's perspective. When asked this question, most people think that because they are not a murderer, bank robber, or something like that, that they must be a good person. However, the Bible says otherwise. Matthew 1917a And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. This is how Jesus answered a man that called him good master. Jesus asks him why he called him good when only God is truly good. Now, being God in the flesh, Jesus was and is truly good. The point Jesus was making is that no mere man is truly good. The reason for this difference is that man judges based on outward actions, but God judges based on the thoughts and intents of man's heart. From that perspective, none of us are good people. 1 Samuel 16, 7 For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. If you still think you are a good person, let's see how well your goodness stacks up to the Ten Commandments. Now, while it is true that we cannot be saved by keeping the Ten Commandments, they do show us sin. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Romans 3.20 Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, but by the law is the knowledge of sin. Before we look at the Ten Commandments, it needs to be noted that it only takes breaking one of these laws to be guilty. For example, if you rob a bank, it matters not that you are not guilty of murder or any other law. You are still guilty of violating the law, and you should go to jail. The same thing goes for God's law. Break one and you are guilty of violating the law, and you deserve the punishment thereof. James 2.10 For whosoever keepeth the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Romans 6.23a For the wages of sin is death. Romans 20.14 And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So if we transgress just one of God's laws, we are guilty and deserve the punishment which is eternal death in the lake of fire. So let's look at just five of the Ten Commandments, that is just half of them, and see how you are doing. Deuteronomy 5.11 Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Taking the name of God in vain includes using it as a swear word. Have you ever used God or Jesus as a swear word, even just once? If you are honest with yourself, you will probably have to say yes. Well, this is called blasphemy, and it is a violation of this commandment. Deuteronomy 5.17, Thou shalt not kill. At this point, you are probably thinking that you are not guilty of this one. After all, you have probably never physically murdered someone. But what about in your thoughts? 1 John 3.15, Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. This shows that God equates hating someone to murder. That is because when you hate someone, you usually want them dead. So, have you ever hated anyone? If so, God sees you as a murderer. Deuteronomy 5.18 Neither shalt thou commit adultery. Now before you go saying that you are not guilty of this one because you have never cheated on your husband or wife, and you have never dated someone else's husband or wife, okay, but have you ever looked with lust at a person you were not married to? 
Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her in his heart. So you can see that looking with lust at someone other than your husband or wife is committing adultery in your heart, making you just as guilty as someone who has committed the physical act of adultery. So have you ever looked with lust at someone other than your husband or wife? If you are honest, you have to answer yes, and God sees you as an adulterer. If you can honestly answer this question no, and you are above the age of 13, you may want to get a medical exam because you probably have a physical problem. Deuteronomy 5.19, neither shall thou steal. So, have you ever taken anything that does not belong to you without the permission of the owner? Then you have indeed stolen. You do not need to rob a bank to be guilty of stealing. It could be something as little as deliberately taking a paperclip from work. If you are honest with yourself, you have to admit that at some point you have stolen something, even if it was small. So in God's eyes, you are a thief. Deuteronomy 5.20 Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. So, have you ever lied? Come on, be honest with yourself. We have all lied from time to time, even without meaning to. So if you have ever lied, that makes you a liar. Now be honest with yourself about how many of the five of the Ten Commandments listed above you have broken. And remember, there are five more out there that you probably have broken as well. Now, if you were honest with yourself, you would have to admit that you are a blasphemous, lying, thieving, adulterous, murderer, or something similar. So based on this, if God were to judge you for your sin right now, do you think you would be innocent or guilty? Clearly, you would be guilty and condemned to hell. Revelation 21.8 But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There is no way for you to save yourself. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The simple fact is that we have all sinned and are all guilty before God. Romans 3.20 Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Because we have all sinned, there is nothing we can do to save ourselves, since even if we could start obeying all the law, it would not help, so we can do nothing to save ourselves. But the law does show us what sin is, so that we can see that we have indeed sinned. Jesus paid the price for our sin. Romans 5, 8 and 9. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. As God in the flesh, he never sinned, and so he was able to pay the penalty for our sin by his death on the cross, shedding his blood for our sin. It was confirmed three days later by Jesus rising from the dead. This was the only way that God could redeem us while maintaining justice. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ paying for our sin, God offers eternal life with him as a free gift. Acts 20.21 20, Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 2.4 or despisest thou the riches of his goodness in forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? You need to repent of your sin. This involves turning away from your sin and turning towards Jesus, realizing that you cannot save yourself. Repentance does not mean you have to clean up your life before you can be saved. God will do that for you once you are saved. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference. Romans 3:26 through 28 To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 10, 9 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. To accept God's gift of eternal life, you need to believe on Jesus and put your faith in him to save you from your sin. This includes believing that Jesus is God in the flesh and that he died on the cross for the payment of your sin and that he rose from the dead. 
Romans 4, 24 through 25. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was risen for our justification. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has promised to save you by faith in Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. So if you believe in your heart that Jesus is God in the flesh, and that he died on the cross for the payment of your sin, and that he rose from the dead, then repent of your sin, putting your faith in Jesus to save you from your sin. Then it is a simple matter of praying and asking him to save you. The exact words are not important. The prayer is not a magical incantation or anything like that. You are simply calling on Jesus to save you. Second Corinthians 6 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time of acceptance, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you sincerely believe that Jesus is God in the flesh, and that he died on the cross for the payment of your sin, and that he rose from the dead, and you repent of your sin in faith in Jesus to save you from your sin, then now is the time to ask Jesus to save you. Please do so now. If someone is genuinely saved, there should be indications of their new life in Christ. Not all of these are clearly evident immediately following salvation. But when someone is genuinely saved, the Lord will work in your life to bring about changes in your life. 1 John 5, 11 through 13 And this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son has life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on, on the name of the Son of God, and ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. If you have believed on and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, as described above, then you have the Son, and thus you have eternal life. 1 John 3.14 We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Someone who is generally saved will love fellow believers in Jesus. This is not a sensual love, but a selfless caring for other Christians. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. If someone is generally saved, there will be a noticeable change in their life. The way they look at sin will change, and over time God will work in their life to remove sins they have been involved in. Sometimes God will remove sins from a new Christian immediately, but other times it will be a process. As with God's help, you learn that certain things are sinful and remove them from your life. If this changed life is absent and continues to be absent, then the person is probably not really saved. Someone who is generally saved and continues to live in sin with no effort to change will be dealt with by the Lord, bringing trouble into their life to get their attention. If this is absent, then the person is probably not saved. However, one of the strongest indications of genuine salvation is this change in the person's life. Not only will there be a change in how you see sin, but over time, someone who is generally saved will want to please God and do His will. It will also include a love for God's Word, the Bible. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, where do you go from here? Well, having accepted Jesus Christ, you should start reading the Bible regularly because it will help you grow in your relationship to Jesus Christ. If you do not have one, get yourself a King James Bible. I recommend that you stay away from modern translation because, put simply, they are junk. You can get a free PDF copy of the King James Bible at the following address. You can also find a free MP3 audio reading of the King James Bible at this address. If you have a Kindle, you can get a copy of the King James Bible for the Kindle at this address for 99 cents. You will find links to all of these addresses in the description of this video. Eventually, it is a good idea to get a printed copy of the King James Bible. Two good sources for reasonably priced King James Bibles are the two following addresses. You'll find links to both addresses in the description of this video. In reading the Bible as a new Christian, it is good to start with the Gospel of John. You should also find some good preaching. It needs to be noted that you should never follow any preacher blindly, but check what he says against the Word of God, that is the Bible. I recommend the following. Blessed Assurance Ministries at the following address and King James Video Ministries at kingjamesvideoministries.com 
Links to both of these addresses are available in the description of this video. It is also important for your growth as a Christian to spend time in prayer. Prayer is more than asking God for things. It is a major part of a Christian's fellowship with and worship of God. Prayer is one area you tend to grow with over time as a Christian. But as communication is important in any relationship, prayer is an important part of a Christian's relationship with God. Now, sooner or later, after accepting Jesus as your Savior, you will sin. Now, while you will not lose your salvation, it does adversely affect your relationship with God. So, what should you do to restore your fellowship with God? 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, if you sin after accepting Jesus as your Savior, repentantly confess your sin to God. There is no need to go to a priest or other minister, just God. However, if your sin was against another human being, you will need to make it right with that person, particularly if that person is a fellow Christian. There is no more important decision than what you will do with Jesus in the free gift of salvation that he purchased for mankind by shedding his blood on the cross and raising again from the dead. Your eternal destiny depends on it. If you have already accepted Jesus, then welcome to God's family. If not, what are you waiting for? 2 Corinthians 6 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It's the time to come to Jesus in faith and accept God's free gift of salvation. You may not get another chance because you never know when death will come. Don't put it off another moment. 